welcome back into the extra point here on WEGL 91.1 FM or online at WEGLFM.com. I'm back. The host is back. Jared Dillard is back, everybody. Um, excuse me, we're co-hosts. Uh, I was here before you were. We're co-hosts. Uh, we okay, okay, co-hosts. okay, technically, based on our contract, which I really got to talk to the management about that, but uh, based on our contract, yes, we're co-hosts. Yes. Welcome into the Extra Point. Jared Dillard, alongside me, the one, the only, it's Brooks Children's Brooks. Back in black, how are we doing? Doing great. Doing fantastic. It's beautiful outside. A little chillier than it was yesterday. Did you miss me? It's a long silence that I don't like. Do do you want me to answer truthfully? Yes. A little bit. I missed you a little bit. I especially since I only got, you know, maybe twenty four hours notice that I was doing it by myself. Look, that that was all on me. I had some business to take care of, but you were on vacation down in the beach. Oh, I was not on vacation. I was not I would rather have been doing the show than what I was doing. But you know, it, it was a little bit of vacation. It was vacation. Whatever you may call it. I'm convinced you were down the beach. Oh, man. I, I didn't listen to any of the show. I'm sorry. I didn't support you that way. I just saw the one random clip of you on the video format. Um, just kind of just talking to the mic by yourself. It looked kind of lonely. It was a little lonely. It was a little lonely. Oh, man. But we're back together. The duo. Give me a knuckle bump. There we go. You hit the mouse. Ugh. Anyway, got a lot to talk about on the show. Of course, big game tonight. Auburn goes on the road to play Arkansas. This is a game that you know, we should win. Or this is a game that Auburn should win. And with a win, especially with Tennessee playing before them, uh, the SEC could be locked up tonight. And for Auburn, they, they really need to get off the snide, as some people might say. And this is a big game for them because you know if you lose two on the road to Florida and Arkansas, you know South Carolina already beat you once. Now you should win at home uh, come Saturday if that does happen. But you don't want to leave it to chance. You don't want if you want to go ahead and put away Tennessee, go ahead and put away Tennessee. And Auburn is going to look to do that tonight, eight Central, over on the SEC Network to take on Arkansas in Fayetteville. There's some other big college basketball games going on uh, yesterday as well today. Yesterday. Number five Duke took a big L against Virginia Tech, and they only UNC- lost by one though. That's a big L. And UNC looks to take on Miami in a big ACC clash tonight, also at eight Central. If you want to call in, you want to talk some sports, you can call in at 334-844-9345. That's 334-844-9345. Talk to us about anything you want to talk about in the sports world because, you know, we're the extra point. We've been the X's and O's from around the country and around the world. We still need an intern. Oh, we need a big intern. Uh, what do you want to talk about first? You want to go Auburn basketball? Sure. All right, let's, let's let's talk Auburn basketball. Uh, went down to Florida, struggled. Look, I'm gonna be honest with you. When I saw that, I didn't catch the first half, but when I saw in the second half that Florida hit a three quarter court shot at the buzzer, I thought to myself, "Yeah, it's not our night. <laughs> it's not. The it, night. Is, it is not the night uh, for Auburn." Still battled hard, came up short. But for Auburn, it, I think people are getting antsy right now, especially down here, because, I mean, look at it this way. We've only lost five games. That is still a great season. That is an absolutely great season. That's an absolutely great season. It's only five games we've lost. It feels like more. It feels like it feels like we're more like a 18 and 11 team than... You know, 24 and 5 or wherever we are right now. And there's a big game tonight against Arkansas. But I think people are trying to get antsy because our size, I think, has become a forefront of the team. Like before, when you're winning and you're draining threes and you're doing all these crazy dance moves, nobody cares about what your weaknesses are until you lose a couple of games. And it's like, there's our weakness. And we're going to get exploited because we're not a very big team, if I remember correctly. And this is with Macklemore in the lineup before he even got injured. We were still ranked 300-something in size. 
I don't know what we are now because he's hurt. I mean, yes, our size is a problem, but they battled through the size and beat a very a bigger Alabama team last uh, Wednesday night and beat them pretty convincingly. We beat, even with Macklemore, we were still an undersized team. We beat Kentucky. I'm, Auburn beat Kentucky. Yeah. But one of the problems from this past week was, or from this past Saturday, was Auburn just got outshot. Florida didn't miss anything. Everything was going in for Florida. Just like two weeks ago when they were at South Carolina. South Carolina couldn't miss a shot to save their life. And when you're playing a team that is just, they're not missing shots, it's hard to beat them. That is what I'm watching. That's what this Auburn team thrives on is they they need the lead because if you're shooting about the same as they are and if you get a slight lead, you can beat this Auburn team. Yeah. It's like the, the A&M game. Remember A&M shot the lights out. Yeah, any... Every game we've lost this year, except for maybe the Temple game, I don't, I don't quite remember that game as well. But every game we've lost this year, the other team just outshot us, or outshot Auburn. Yeah, and it, you know, it it does have to do with the size. You can't get in there and contest the shots like if you had a big man. But Auburn still, you know, was in there to the end of all those games they lost. They all they scored both every time they've lost they've scored close to the same amount of points. So it, if you are the if, other team shooting, if then. you are shooting, if you are have a great night shooting against Auburn, it is hard, and you get a, even a slight lead. It's hard for Auburn to come back. Well, one of the biggest things that Auburn just needs to focus on is just getting back into the rhythm. Uh, we've had games where, you know, our big three, so to speak, uh, I say so to speak, our big three, Bryce Brown, Jared Harper, and Mustafa Heron, in our past two games, one's played very well, one's played okay, and the other one has been, they all three haven't had strong performances, okay performances, but not strong. It can be better. And that's what that's just what's lacking with Auburn right now. They they need either this big three to come together and you know produce more points, or flip side, they need somebody to step up and play some good basketball. For example, Horace Spencer had a good game against Alabama, coming in and you know doing well. Yeah. So. And it's because we, we, we lost that big man. It's because we lost that big man that Horace Spencer stepped up to the challenge, and he did well because he's honestly our only big man left. Yeah, him <laughs> and uh, Chuma. Chuma, you hey, can... Hey, hey, hey. Don't forget my boy Cole Blackstock. When was the last time Cole Blackstock saw the court? When's the last time we blew out a team? <laughs> not, not recently. But Patrick Pat- Keim has seen the court more than Cole Blackstock oh. in the past month. When he uh Patrick Kime got he into walked, the actual when, game. When he when he got into the game against Alabama, I was gonna lose my mind. It was a great moment. Oh, but it was only about ten seconds, so he still got him in he still got into the game this month more he than He showed up on Black a stat top. sheet. He showed up. Yeah, he did. But uh I think one thing that the this Tiger team has going for them is they don't this year they don't lose more than one game in a row. It's true. They have yet to lose two games in a row. I think that's what and they've got that going for them. It's going to be a tough environment t- tonight in Fayetteville. It always is. They're a good basketball team. Everyone's kind of forgotten about, not maybe forgotten about them, but they're fl- kind of flying under the radar. There are four top 25 basketball teams playing tonight. Auburn's one of them. Do you even know the line on this Auburn game right now? Isn't it like one and a half Arkansas? It's one now. Oh, it dropped. It's it. it, it Dropped half a point, which doesn't mean anything, but... I mean, Florida was a a two-and-a-half-point favorite Saturday. They were. Uh, The other team being number 16, Tennessee, who is also on the road to Mississippi State. And that's a big game for Mississippi State because, look, Mississippi State is 21-8. and They're trying to get into the tournament. They're still one of the last four teams out, according to Joe Lenardi. And on top of that, Mississippi State 
they are trying to scratch and claw their way to the tournament, and they have one. Uh, they have a you know a decent chance of getting in with the what with how the rest of their schedule pans out for them. Uh, for Mississippi State, of course, you're gonna have Tennessee on the road, or you're gonna have Tennessee at home, and then you have LSU in Baton Rouge. I mean, those are two. I mean, those are two, you know, games that you can use on your bracketology to say, "Hey, we deserve to get in." Well, Tennessee, Tennessee more than the, Tennessee, Tennessee more than LSU. Tennessee much more than LSU. But LSU is a road game, which helps. A road conference game helps. I think if Mississippi State plays, you know, to their full potential, like we've seen them play at some points during the year, they'll definitely beat LSU. I think Mississippi State has the, all the capabilities to be LSU. And if they play to their full potential tonight, I think they can beat Tennessee because Tennessee is very beatable. As they they've got some good, you know, parts like Admiral Schofield, but they're very beatable, especially on the road. They are in Starkville, right? Yes, and Mississippi State is favored, especially at the hump. Another one that probably nobody really cares about: Rhode Island at home against St. Joe's, and then as mentioned, excuse me, I care about that game. Let's go Rams, Rhodey. Stop. And Miami going down to UNC, take on the Tar Heels. Miami uh, is a 10-point underdog. You know what's funny? What, what is North Carolina ranked? Ninth. They're ninth. I believe. And yes. everyone is saying, like, this is a down year for North Carolina because they haven't been, you know, they've struggled in a few Tw- games. I mean, 20, they, they're not used to having seven losses right now. They're not used to that. It, I think it's funny how some of these schools, it's like North Carolina, Kentucky, Duke, they lose seven games. It's like, oh, we're having a down year. We're so bad. Well, like, no. well Kentucky is playing yo-yo with the top 25, bouncing in and out. They're not used to that. What? There was a few years. Didn't they miss the tournament a few years back? And they, everyone lost their mind? If they did, then I, for some reason I don't remember it. I think I remember because they missed the tournament – few years back and everyone lost their mind but they kept Calipari it was like big talks they were going to fire Calipari it's like why it's one why? year it's a rebuilding year you can't have every wait, year wait, can't wait, be wait, a, wait 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 it's Kentucky every year is a rebuilding year I mean yeah but you can't have a championship team every year if you're relying on you know one and dones every year like Kentucky or, or North Carolina well not North, not as much North Carolina but Duke UCLA you Louisville well not anymore no 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 not Aww. anymore not anymore for was that. Was that too soon? No, no, not at all. I mean, look, you you did what you did, and you just gotta you just gotta live with that. I don't really have anything else for college basketball. It's a great time. I'm we, ready for March we, Madness. We kind of had to like scratch that one out. We we just had to claw something out of college basketball. I wasn't ready to talk about college basketball to be quite honest. I'm just ready for some March Madness. This yeah. weekend we get the Big Ten tournament starts up. We do. It's we, gonna, we get to talk we, some tournament. We already get the feel. Of tournament time, it's gonna be great. Is 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 Purdue still the favorite to win the Big Ten championship? Probably. I mean, they've got the best. I think the best team. I mean, Purdue and Ohio State. I don't think I, Michigan State's good, but I don't think they can beat. I think Purdue will. I think Purdue can beat them. Well, that'll do it for the first 15 minutes of the show. Remember, if you want to call in, you can call in at 334-844-9345. That's 334-844-9345. Brooks will answer the phone, and we can get you on, talk some sports. We need an intern. From around the country and around the world, and applications for interns are yet to go out yet. We'll get those out soon, one of these days, eventually. There will be a talent portion, though. You'll listen to the Extra Point here on WEGL 91.1 FM or online at WEGLFM.com. This is a place where it only takes a second to imagine your future. Grasp a new concept in class. Inspire a child's curiosity. Discover a real world solution. Seize an unexpected opportunity. This is where you gain the preparation, confidence, and determination to succeed. This is Auburn. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek.
And welcome back into the Extra Point here on WEGL 91.1 FM or online at WEGLFM.com. If you want to join the show and talk some sports with us here on the Extra Point, you can call in at 334-844-9345. That's 334-844-9345. Jared Dill alongside me, Brooke Childress, and, uh, well, we're scratching the bottom of the barrel right now. We were not very prepared coming into this show. But, Jared, I, I'm ready. You give me a subject, and I will. T- I can take off. Well, I'm about to take off on this subject. Brooks, I've got an article right here. MLB's $20 million players who will be irrelevant in 2018. Spring training has started. Do you want to go through this list and see if we agree or not with these players? Sure. Because I have a problem. But I think my problem, well, no, it's not going to be solved because I've listened to every single, at least part of every single Braves spring training game so far this year. And I thought maybe this today will be the day, but we'll be done at two. So I'll probably catch the end of it. I have a problem. So here you go. Are you ready for the first player? Always. I'm going to give you the team. Obviously, they're over $20 million. Uh-huh. And I want to see if you can guess them. Oh, ooh, are we playing a game? You know what? Maybe. We are playing a game. <gasps> I love this music. I just music just makes me so happy for some reason. Alright, here we go. The Boston Red Sox. Who is their 20 million plus player that may be irrelevant in 2018? Is it Oh, who <laughs> Red Sox paying a lot of money? This is weird. I'm on the other side of this game. I'm usually not the one <laughs> answering the questions. <laughs> The boots on the other foot now. Yeah. Uh, is it David Price? No. Ooh. It's Hanley Ramirez. No, he's already irrelevant. I don't know what you mean. That he's going to be irrelevant. His contract. In his contract is twenty-two point eight million, and his projected WAR uh, is point eight. Hanley Ramirez has not been relevant in baseball since he left Miami. Remember, he's had like three. He's maybe he's had like one walk-off win, and everyone's like, "Ah, Hanley Ramirez is so great." Remember, the team signed J.D. Martinez, which may, uh, which may, uh, you know, mess with you know how much Hanley actually plays these days. Are you ready for the next one? The Colorado Rockies. Ooh, who do the Rockies have? And I'll, I'll give you this. I'll either tell you if it's a. Position player or a pitcher? Okay. This is, this is a position player. Ooh. Um, who do the Rockies have? Is it is it Trevor Story? No. I don't think he gets over $20 million. Listen, he went on that tear a few years ago, and they could have, like, freaked out and be like, oh, here's all this money. A few, <laughs> Take a few, it all. Wait, you said a few years ago. Wasn't that, was that last year or the year no, before that? No, it was two years ago. Okay. Ian Desmond of the Colorado Rockies. Ian Desmond's a Rocky? $22 million. He is. Good. I'm glad he's in the Rockies. He's not in the Nationals anymore. His projected war for 2018 is .8. That's not good. Ian Desmond has is like Hanley Ramirez. He hasn't been relevant since he left his last club. Remember in 2016, he began on the disabled list. I don't remember And that. Mark Reynolds was the first baseman that year. He ended up being the first baseman. Um, But yeah. He signed, uh, so look, look at how his contract is kind of broken up. In 2017, he's going to make $8 million. This year, he's going to make $22 million. Then $15 million, $15 million, $8 million. So he's reached the apex of his contract. It's going to go down, but it's not going to be a good year for the Rockies when it comes to that contract. I mean, I don't think he, he, I don't think he ever did anything, to my knowledge, to warrant $20 million anyway. Here we go. The Detroit Tigers. This is a pitcher. Ooh. They've shuffled their pitchers, too. I don't know who they Um, I'm trying to think of who could possibly be a a uh, Tigers pitcher anymore because I got rid he, of Verlander. He is a new pitcher for them. He was not with them last year. <laughs> and you're going to kick yourself when you realize who it is. Who did the, Who did they sign? Was it... No, he's a position player. You know what? I'm going to take a shot. No, in the dark. I, I lied. He didn't just sign with them. He's been with them for two years. <sighs> I'm going to take a shot in the dark. Then I'm going to say Bud Norris. No, it is former Nationals pitcher Jordan Zimmerman. 
Jordan Zimmerman's a oh I forgot he was there. Yeah, he's there now. He's I also like their forgot. Third my, my my most recent memory of him is at the national. I forgot because they had Zimmerman pitching and then they had Zimmerman at third. His Unrelated pro- to his projected uh, WAR is point seven, and I mean like Jordan Zimmerman's not that amazing of a pitcher. I mean, in twenty seventeen he was eight and thirteen with a over six ERA. That's not good. No. That's, That's not, not good. good, and they uh, they're gonna owe him twenty four million dollars this year. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> I would. I don't know why you would pay them that. Here we go. This is gonna be hard because it's the New York Yankees. <laughs> so everybody, over everybody's over twenty million. It is a position player. Hey, you had one single. Here's twenty million. It's a position player. Mm-hmm. Is it a regular starter? I mean, wait. Let me think back to the worst contracts. When we he, may, he may have been their worst contract. Is it Jacoby Ellsbury? It is Jacoby Ellsbury. Ooh. Projected war of a point three, and his 2018 projected stats is a two fifty eight batting average with six home runs and 28 RBIs. It's not good in a very hitter-friendly park like Yankee Stadium. See, here's the thing about Jacoby Ellsbury. I'm pretty sure he's like a good reserve player like off the bench, but he's not $21 million worth. Or maybe for the Yankees, that is a reserve player. Who knows these days? <laughs> I, like I said, you hit one single, one game-winning single like three years ago. Here's $20 million. Here we go. We're going the Chai Sox, the Chicago White Sox. He's a pitcher worth $21 million. Can you name this pitcher? Pitcher, is it... Did they trade Quintanilla? Is it Jose Quintanilla? No. Or is it Quintana? I don't remember. Now, he joined the White Sox in a June 2016 trade. Is they, it He hasn't been with them long. On. Is it No, they traded Chris Sale to the to the uh Red Sox. Uh this involved a team out west. It's not uh no, they traded him too. Wow, I can't remember. Is it Yeah, squirm in your seat. I I could is it Matt Kane? James Shield. Oh yeah. Point two he came from the Padres, didn't he? He did. And but he, he was at the Royals before that, and before that he was at the Rays. Um I could trace those players back. He's worth twenty one million dollars. His war is point two. His projected his projected stat in twenty eighteen is seven and twelve with a five point five five ERA. He has not been the same since he got traded. Which time? <laughs> All of them. I mean, he was decent in Kansas City. Here you go, here you go, here you go. This is one that you should probably get. It's the New York Mets. He's a position player, and they're going to owe him $22.4 million, which is also close to what another team owes him. Another? Oh, ooh, ooh. It's it. Is it my favorite outfielder, Matt Kemp? No. Oh. Hmm. I don't know then. Wait, David Wright. No. Adrian Gonzalez. Hello. He's at the Mets? He's with the Mets. I thought he was just like in limbo somewhere like in Pittsburgh. Not on Pittsburgh's team, just in the city. Wow. I didn't know Adrian Gonzalez was at the Mets. Well, maybe him and Tim Tebow can get along. Have parties. So, so the Braves released him. He went to the Mets, who will pay him the Major League minimum. And then the Braves are going to pay them whatever they have to pay him. That ridiculous amount of money. That 21 something. So the 22.4 million, 21 million is the Braves, and then the rest of it is the Mets. It makes me so mad. So the Mets and the Braves are in the same division, right? Yes. So the, the Braves are playing an opposing player's salary for the Mets. Yeah, but it's Adrian Gonzalez. So you, are you going to say the same thing when he hits a walk off home run? He's not going to hit anything. That's what I'm saying. Oh man, here we go. Los Angeles Dodgers. He's owed twenty one point five million. His projected war zero point zero. That's Matt Kemp. That's Matt Kemp. Uh his projected stats is gonna be a two sixty four batting average with one home run and four RBIs. Matt Kemp has really hit the bottom, hasn't he? Yeah. Oh, it's a sad he, day. He wasn't that bad at the Braves, I didn't think. It was kinda sad to see him go. And here we go. Worth twenty seven million dollars. The Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Oh, that's Albert Pujols. All Albert day long. Pujols, 
projected war is 0. 0.0, batting average 254, 21 home runs, 67 RBIs. Do you remember when the Angels went on like that spending spree and they got Pujols and uh, who was the guy? Hamilton. Yeah, Josh Hamilton. And they're like, oh, we were, we're gonna be. We were scared that we're moment. just gonna jack home runs out of the park, and then they both like fell flat. That was like Major League Baseball's equivalent to, because that was around the time that uh, kind of like the basketball super team started. Uh, it kind of started before that with the Heat, but that's when they started like picking up. Yeah, and you had and, Mike we, Trout and we thought that we thought the Angels were gonna do that, and we we're like, oh my gosh. You had Mike Trout, Josh Hamilton, uh, Albert Pujols, and the only thing that would made it better is at the time if you had signed Chris Davis from the Orioles, because there was that was that same time he was. Uh, Putting up the home run numbers too, and we and everyone was like, "Oh my word, the Angels are going to be unstoppable." And I think they may have gone to the playoffs once, and that was it. Maybe, maybe we honestly can't even remember to be quite honest. But I'm glad you had fun with that. I I got a few, got a few. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you did well. You did well. Um, anything you want to talk about before we go right to break? We only got like a minute left. I just I forgot I didn't know where Adrian Gonzalez went. I mean, honestly, nobody really did. Uh, if we talk about something for the last minute right here, uh, there's a report. This is breaking news that a Sean Miller decision could be coming soon from Arizona because there's that whole there's that whole mess going on with a lot of teams. Uh, Arizona being a big one. There was a weird one with Michigan State and Miles Bridges. Had he had to pay forty dollars to charity to be eligible? Like there, like, I want, was we, that a, we we can discuss that when was, we come back from. Was break. that an NCAA? I want to know if that was an NCAA thing or just like Michigan State's. Like here, forty dollars. You'll you'll. We I, th- play I you. think I think it was an NCAA thing. Like, look, we can talk about that when we come back from break. But for right now, we got to go. We got to run. We got to run. But we're gonna be back. Remember, you can call in at 334-844-9345. That's 334-844-9345. Talk to the Extra Point. You can talk sports from around the country and around the world. Yeah, if you want to talk to us about British Premier League soccer, I could do it. Or talk about Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. Yeah, I'm all down. I'm all down for some curl talk. Listen to the Extra Point here on WEGL 91.1 FM or online at WEGLFM.com. If you don't fix them, sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire. And that could be scary. Only you can prevent wildfires. See on page four that the projections need to be tornado next Thursday. Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh uh-uh. uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. And welcome back to the Extra Point here on WEGL 91.1 FM or online at WEGLFM.com. Jared Diller along with Brooks Childress. And, we, you know, we're going to switch some gears. Let's talk that FBI uh, allegation probe, whatever you want to call it, bombshell, the Yahoo. We need the uh, cops theme on the board for this. Bad boys. What bad you gonna boys. Do? What you going to do? <laughs> Come for you, Sean Miller. <laughs> um... 
Well, here, here's the thing. First of all, I would not expect Yahoo of any source to give out this bombshell, but hey. They're breaking news, man. They're breaking news. Also, they're showing you, did Kim Kardashian look good in that dress at the Oscars last night? I'm just Who like, am I kidding? Kim Kardashian won't get an invite to the Oscars. Uh, so, Yahoo Sports uh, report came out uh, this past Friday, and man, a lot of names were dropped. Uh, a lot of players who are no longer there have been implicated. So, a big one being Dallas Mavericks guard uh, Dennis Smith Jr., who was at NC State, who was paid up to what may have been $73,500. Uh, another one, Isaiah Whitehead, former Seton Hall guard in Brooklyn Net, $26,000. First of all, Seton Hall, if, if we had to guess what schools were going to be involved, Seton Hall was not one of them in my mind. The Pirates are doing some illegal... You couldn't think the Pirates would do anything illegal? <laughs> um, Tim Quarterman, who is the current Clippers G-Leaguer and former LSU guard, $16,000. Yeah, LSU, it was worth that $16,000, one. <laughs> I don't even remember Tim Quarterman at LSU. And obviously... That's his name, right? I got his name right at 30 yes, seconds after you said it. Uh, former uh, I tell Washington that guard... Is. Former Washington guard and 76ers first round overall pick Markel Fultz, ten thousand dollars. So there's just a couple of names. I mean, you gotta pay that guy. Who's going to Washington? I'm gonna be in the rain all the time. Um. So other players who are now in the NBA: Kyle Lowry, Nerlens Noel, Kyle O'Quinn. Where did Kyle Lowry play school? Uh, Villanova. Play school. Yeah, that's play school. <laughs> <laughs> they went to play school. You went to play school. That's that's what they do. If you're one and done, you go play school and you go to the NBA. All right. So, okay, but this is where it gets serious, okay? So now uh, Miles Bridges was named into it. So now we're getting to the current players. Miles Bridges being one. Uh, two USC players, $2,000 apiece, Benny Boatwright and Chimenzi Metu. I think that's how you say it. Uh, those are two USC players. The, the, the weird, see, here's the weird thing about what's going on. We we heard these outrageous numbers: seventy three thousand, twenty six thousand. Then we get to two thousand for the USC players, and I was like, okay, two thousand dollars. You know, that's shady. I mean, you don't need that much convincing to go to USC. You're like, hey, guess what? We're in Los Angeles. There's a beach like five minutes away. You're like, I'm there. So here's the thing about Miles Bridges. This is this is probably one of the most. Uh, Head scratching one there is. So the document cites a four hundred dollar advance to Bridges' mother and a seventy dollar meal for his parents, both in May of twenty sixteen. We're talking four hundred seventy dollars. And apparently, in order for Miles Bridges to be cleared of or to be eligible per the NCAA, he had to donate forty dollars to charity. Look, I know the FBI, and we we need to get corruption out of the NCAA. But it, it, it kind of seems like we're playing with pennies now, isn't it, for some of these players? I like, mean, I'm just ready for Duke to go down because they bought some kid's meal at Longhorn. I mean, that, that was a thing. That's <laughs> honestly, that's honestly what we're getting to at this point. Uh, there are some big ones that are seventy three thousand, and there's some big ones that are fifty thousand, twenty six thousand. But if we're getting down to like, you know, paying for meals that are forty dollars, I mean. Is that really that big of a deal? We shouldn't be doing it, probably. But is, are, are, we, are, we, are we really going to be sanctioning a university because of this? I mean, they already had the deal a few years ago with the Oklahoma players saying they weren't getting fed enough. They weren't getting enough to eat. And then no, they, you mean UConn players. It was UConn who did that. Well, there was Oklahoma, too. Was it Oklahoma? Yeah, Oklahoma. It was either Oklahoma or Oklahoma State, one of the two. I know, I know during the tournament, it was UConn who did that. Or the, the, the guy was like, Matt, sometimes I go to hungry. I, I, yeah. go, I go to hungry. Go I, go to, <laughs> I go to sleep hungry. <laughs> well, you know, they had that issue a few years ago, and the NCAA said, hey, y'all can feed your athletes how much you want on campus. Like, just, you know, feed them as much as they need. And, you know, universities, like Auburn being an example, have done a very good job of making sure that, you know, their student athletes at least have somewhere to go, somewhere to eat. Making sure they're always well fed. Indoors yeah. do a good job at that. Or at least the one that I go to does a good job of that, at least. So it you know, it's an incidental violation to buy the kids meals like they did like some of the schools did. 
it shouldn't like you shouldn't have to do that if you have you know all you can eat on campus like you shouldn't have to go buy a kid's meal somewhere else because it's like hey guess what there's food here now this also raises the question should college kids be paid that i feel like those are either two separate discussions we, I, we would have to have i don't think they're interconnecting they're interconnecting it is true they're interconnecting but I guess the the question becomes, well, I wasn't ready for this kind of discussion, to be quite honest. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I just took the wagon and shoved it down that path. Here's the thing about the paying of the players. Okay. So for a lot of players, for a lot of players, we don't even know if they knew money was being taken. And that's always a shady thing, right? You know what I'm saying? If I was a player and my parents took money and I didn't know about it and I got ruled ineligible, I'm going to be upset. But is that my fault? Yeah. So th- there's that side of it. And then there's the other side where you're like, well, if somebody, like, why why does the NCAA, NCAA have these crazy, absurd rules sometimes? Like, sprinkles. No, it was uh, <laughs> South Carolina football had to report self-report a violation that they put, or it was icing on a cookie cake. Yeah, like stuff like that. Or the, the report a couple of days ago where at the Florida Auburn game, Florida fans started throwing five dollar bills at Auburn players, and Auburn had to self-report it. But we're getting we're getting down to this kind of level stuff here, and it should be like things that like shouldn't matter, but. It does. It does matter. And I, I want to get the corruption out of NCAA. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like we got to start drawing a fine line between what's, you know, right and what's wrong. South Carolina should be able to put icing on a cookie cake, okay? I, I will fight for that. I will fight for that. And it's not, I mean, who wants to eat just a plain cookie cake? And there, there should be, there should be a way... Where I don't I don't think it was it's that bad to pay for one recruit's meal if he's visiting campus. Like I I don't think that's a bad thing. I think you need to be able to put it on a form and submit it somewhere saying, Hey, we're not, you know, taking this kid out fourteen days in a row and paying for his meal, but I don't think it's a bad thing. Just being curious, you know what I'm saying? You know who's not happy with this all the NCAA? The NBA. Well, because their name is all over this. Not that they did anything wrong, but if you look at the report, it doesn't say former, you know, NC State Wolfpack player Dennis Smith Jr. It says, it says current Dallas it says Mavericks. Dallas Mavericks player Dennis Smith Jr. And see, the NBA is not happy about it, but I assume the NBA knew this was going to happen eventually. So they're—I mean—they're not going to take the brunt of anything. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to get punished for it, but it, it doesn't make them look. Good. They. Adam Silver already doesn't like the in, in the NCAA. No. And you have seen the NBA starting to bolster the developmental league. It's now the G League, the Gatorade League. That's yeah, a big sponsor. As a big sponsor, you're they, right. They may be, you know, and it was the NBA that said, you know, they put in the one and done. And they may, it may be a thing, I'm not saying it's very soon, but it may be, you know, they put the wheels in motion to say, hey, you don't have to be one and done. If you want to come straight from high school, come play in the D League or the G League now. Yeah. And then once the that way they don't have then, to. Once the NBA scraps together enough money, and I say scrap together like they're in trouble right I'm about now. I to say they're not, they're <laughs> well, not in trouble. If the NBA wants to say, you know what, not only will we have the G League, we'll start having like a European League and a China League. I mean, it's over. The NCAA may be like scratching their head and be like, well. All we got right now is March Madness, you know. So. Yeah, and that's that's the one showcase, like the last showcase of the year for the players. I mean, which is still a big showcase, you know. National TV, every game, you're like putting on a show against these big teams. So you're like, hey, I can do this in the NBA too. But if the NBA says we've had enough of you, NCAA, we're you know, if you're, if the kids want to go to college, they can. But y'all have the option to come straight out of high school. Go to the G League, play a year or two, and then make it to the let NBA. Me, let me ask you this question because we're only, we're only a couple minutes left, and I, I assume we'll probably dive right back into it in our last 15 minutes. But 
do you think the same thing goes on in college football? What, paying of players? Probably the amount of corruption that goes on in basketball. I don't know if it's the same amount of corruption because you don't have the one and dones yeah. like you do, you know, it's in basketball. Di- it's different here. You have to be, what? it's two years, right? I mean, I, technically, you have to play. Th- you have to be here three, or you have to be on campus three years. It's it's something like that, yes. Yes, because you can it's you can redshirt and then it'd be redshirt fr- uh, freshman, redshirt sophomore, and that'd be your third year. You can leave. Yeah, T- technically you don't have to play three years. You just have, you have to, to be, be on campus. You have to be in the on the team for three years. Yes. So I don't think it's as widespread. I think there's a few schools probably that it's not it's not it's not gonna be as bad as college basketball. No, I mean it's like. It, Ole Miss is a great example. Out of nowhere, they started getting number one or five star recruits, number one recruit in the nation, top ten you know recruiting classes. You're like, there's something going on there. They've never done that before. And you're like, well, it's just Hugh Freeze is a great recruiter. Sure he is. He's not doing anything shady. And then this summer, it's like, hey, guess what? He was doing something shady. So there are instances like that when you see like a program out of nowhere just start getting five star recruits and you know big big time recruiting. There's something going on there, but like everyone says, everyone always points at Nick Saban in Alabama. It's like, there's no way. To, like, Nick Saban, I'm fairly certain, runs a clean operation up there. I, I would say he does. I mean, there's you. What's his, his selling point? Is hey, guess what? I'm the closest thing to an NFL coach in the in the or in the NCAA. You come here three years, you're going to be drafted. If you come here, for you can and you win championships. If you come here for at least four years, I guarantee that a you'll win at least one national championship, and b if you're good, you're going to get drafted. Like that's the selling point. Even if you're you know mediocre, the Alabama the brand Alabama football, Nick Saban, NFL teams pay attention to that because he is the. NFL coach of the NCAA. Everyone wants him in the NFL. Everyone's like, oh, we want him as our head coach. He's like, nah, I'm good right down here. We're almost to the finish line. We got 15 more minutes to go. You can join us right after the break. If you want to call in and talk about sports, you can call in at 334 844 9345. That's 334 844 9345. You listen to the extra point here on WEGL 91.1 FM or online at WEGLFM.com. Fans direct your attention to the flagpole for a special presentation. You never really leave Auburn because Auburn never leaves you. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. I hope that you've been able to learn a strong work ethic surrounded by character, integrity, perseverance, so that when your one second comes, you'll be prepared for it. Chris Davis. 45, there goes Davis! Your one second, our one second is now. And our lives have been guided by the principles of one of the greatest academic institutions in the country, Auburn University. Back into the last uh, seven minutes of the extra point here on WGL 91.1 FM or online at WGLFM.com. I'm your host, Jed Dill. Alongside me is Brooke Childress. And, you know, we were reading an uh, article about experimental rules in the NIT that are coming into play. Uh, good thing for Auburn. I don't think we have to worry about that. Nope. Not unless something drastically comes crashing down here at the end of the year. 
I mean, this is Auburn. Because this is Auburn. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, it looks like for the NIT. So, here, here's some big rule changes that they're going to be doing. So, and let me, let me, and tell me what you think about these. They're going to, mo- they're going to extend the three-point line one foot eight inches. How far? FIBA rules. Oh, FIBA. I was about to say, how yeah. far out is the NBA three? Is it farther out than that? Uh, you're, you're you're talking numbers that I don't know. <laughs> I I don't I don't know where NCAA, NBA, and then FIBA rules kind of go out to. Um, then another big one, the shot clock. Obviously, it's thirty seconds. Uh, so after offensive rebound, it's going to reset to twenty seconds, not thirty seconds. I, what do you feel about that one? Uh, I I think it's good for I think it's it's good that they're experimenting with some of these things. The uh, the shot clock it's gonna hurt some teams that like to you know use all of it because it'll be like hey rebound we got thirty seconds no you got ten seconds less. But I mean it it's really theoretically it's like five seconds less because once you rebound on the defense you have ten seconds to get up the court and it takes them usually three to five seconds to get it up across the half-court line. Yeah. So I don't think that's going to be as big an issue. I think the three-point line, it's it's not going to be as big an issue except, like, unless you're, like, a three-point shooter that can only shoot from the three-point, like, the actual line. Because most three-point shooters, they can, you know, they're off the line about a foot anyway. The biggest change for the NIT, four... 10 minute quarters. I think that's uh I don't know how I would feel about that. I mean, we've had these conversations off the air I think quite a bit or at least I I've had it several times off the air with several different people about the quarter system. I like it. It's you like, like it? the NBA's got it. They, you know, they put it in the women's in the uh, NCAA women's game to try to like Try it out there and then move it into the, the men's the, game. The Auburn women basketball games that I watch, they seem to flow by faster with the quarter, like with, with quarters. Yeah. But I don't know how like well that works out. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, do if the game flows by faster, obviously I'm thinking from a commercial standpoint, that's less commercials. Which means less revenue. I mean, that, that, that's where I'm going with that. I mean, it's just, I mean, in, in the long run, I, it's going to be probably another couple of years before the NCAA actually says, you know, what we're think we're, we're they're thinking about it. It's gonna be a couple more years before they say, you know what, we're actually considering this. I I like it personally because I don't like the half system. I I've kind of like see, I, since I have become more of a see, the half system is unique though, but it's it's in the past though like it's it, it is the, past. the only reason they're holding on to it in NCAA men's is because like the older generation is still a part of that, and so you got you know the older like Roy Williams, Coach K, who's the guy Bayheim. You got the older coaches in the league, Calipari. You got the older coaches. That are holding on to it are like this is how we have to do it. And you know all the older people, all the older fans, are like, this is how we have to do it. We have, we've always done it halves, and the women are like, you know what, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do quarters if that's okay with y'all. And it it's worked out. I think it's worked out fine in the women. Here's here's the thing for uh, for the half system and to the quarter system. You know how we have the under sixteen, under twelve, under eight, under four. Yes. See, in the quarter system, it's just under five for each quarter. And then there's like a there's like a floater one in the second half, I think. So you're gonna go from eight media timeouts to I think five. And that is what's gonna cause a lot of problems. And it's called streamlining a game and making it quicker, making it more because we are well, as I mean, I, Brooks, we had a fifteen minute discussion about NCAA and the corruption in it. You know what NCAA cares about? Money. Yes, but they also care about streamlining the game. No, making it no, 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 no. because they, people they are gonna st- like the younger generation, like us, the younger generation. We don't sit, we don't pay attention to games as well. Like if I'm sitting on my couch watching a basketball game, I'll watch till the first media timeout, 
and then I will, unless it's, you know, Auburn playing, I kind of tune it out. It's on, but I kind of tune it out, and I look over at my laptop, and I'm on my laptop, I'm on my phone, and I'm not paying fully attention to it until, like, you know, but second he, half. He, here's the thing. If you're if it's on the TV, but you're not watching, why does the NCAA care? They're still getting their rating from it because it's on your TV. The NCAA doesn't care about streamlining the process because even if 100 people decided not to watch, the money they make from revenue on those commercials will out will just outweigh that. If the NCAA cared about streamlining the process of games, we wouldn't have so many dang commercials in college football. But that they don't care. But it's they do care because they changed it in the women's game to to try it out, and it's worked fine in the women's game. It's worked fine, but it's worked and now, fine. And now they're trying it out in the NIT because they're like, okay, it's worked good in the women's game. Let's see how it looks in the men's game. But I think the the men's game, there's a lot more money flowing through it, so there will be a lot more hesitant to do it. But it's a they. It shows they do care about streamlining the game if they are willing to try it out. If they were, if they're like, you know what, who cares? You know, we don't care about that. They would just, you know, they would just let it be. But they they obviously care enough to try it out in the NIT and say, let's see how this works, and go from there. Simply comes down to you have faith in NCAA. And I what have, they do. It it's just business like you think you you need to cater to your audience like baseball baseball and MLB is trying to you know speed up the game make it you know more ple- more pleasing to the younger generation that's not you know going to sit around a ballpark for hours and they're trying to c- cater to the younger generation that's what this is about they're trying to get it maybe a little bit streamlined maybe more like the NBA which the young young like we love the NBA the younger generation loves the NBA so they're trying to make it more like the NBA, more streamlined, and this is their step. I just can't trust an organization that won't let South Carolina put icing on the cookie cake. That's all I'm saying. Oh, my gosh. And that's going to do it for the extra point here on WEGL 91.1 FM or online at WEGLFM.com. You want to catch the video version, you can catch it on Eagle Eye TV, Channel 6, or at EagleEyeAuburn.com. Also, you can catch our podcast on SoundCloud or on iTunes at some point today. I've given up on giving a time for it because I'm lazy yeah, when it comes to editing it. Yay. For Brooks Childress, I'm Jared Dillard saying so long. Hey, Jared. Until next time. Don't forget to row the boat. Don't forget to row the boat. That's your row the boat reference of the day. Same time, same place next week. We'll see you then.